This video is brought to you by CatBeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. On this episode of Off the Script, number 181, part number one, for your Friday, August 4th, 2017! I got news! On the SummerSlam main event finish, being kept secret from everybody, what does WWE have planned for the Fatal 4-Way at SummerSlam in just two weeks? Also, who is Paul Heyman reportedly pushing to be the next WWE Universal Champion? Also news on Enzo Amore possibly being moved down to NXT or 205 Live. Potential new reason why WWE wants to move him away from Vince McMahon and why he has backstage heat. Also... News on AJ Styles and the United States Championship title match with Kevin Owens at Battleground that everybody still seems to be talking about. Did AJ Styles botch the ending at Battleground? New information on that today on Off The Script. Also, more news concerning our best friend Brian James, Road Dog. Most fans have no idea. What a five-star match even means. That's according to Mr. Road Dog, Mr. Head Creative Rider over at SmackDown Live. We'll talk about it right here on Off The Script. Bailey suffers a shoulder injury on Raw. Is it legit or is it storyline for WWE? Karen Jarrett comments on the incident with Braun Strowman. What does Karen Jarrett have to say about the incident involving Braun Strowman at a Tennessee bar? All this plus so much more right here. And this ain't fake news entertainment, motherfucker! Right here on the number one fucking podcast! Right here on YouTube.com! This is Off the Script. JD from New York, 206. It's Hopper Off the Script. Big show and ride. Strowman and Roman, get off my fucking TV and save me the misery. And all you fucking goons, just grab a cold beer. The man of the hour is finally here. JD from New York, 206. It's time for off the script. JD. What is going on guys? JD from New York here. Thank you so much for tuning back into the channel today, August 4th, 2017. This is of course episode 181, part number one of Off The Script. Starting your weekend off the only way you guys know how with the number one fucking podcast. Not only on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, Audio Boom, and Google Play Music, but right here on YouTube.com. We got a lot of stuff to get into today. Major news on the proposed finish for WWE SummerSlam and the Fatal 4-Way for the Universal Championship. Brock Lesnar, Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, and my man Samoa Joe. Who is Paul Heyman reportedly pushing for to WWE creative and Vince McMahon to walk out of SummerSlam, the new Universal Champion. So we're going to talk about all that. Enzo Amore in more hot water. What he actually did to get under Vince McMahon's skin. Why they want him away from Vince McMahon. They want to move him from Monday Night Raw. Possibly down to NXT. Possibly to 205 Live. But they don't want him on the main roster anymore. So I got news on that. Also, Bailey has been a hot topic of discussion this week. Is her reported shoulder injury legit? Or is WWE merely trying to build sympathy for a much, much broken Bailey character on Monday Night Raw? We'll talk about all that plus so much more 
right here on Off The Script. I want to thank everybody for continuing love and support all week long, man. We had a big week. Monday Night Raw review, SmackDown Live review, NXT review, some Call of Duty gameplay, some Fire Pro Wrestling live on the channel right now. If you guys missed any of that, plus I uploaded an Off The Script extra video talking about John Cena's status with the WWE moving forward now that he's going to be the lead character in a new Transformers movie spinoff, just really going over the, the story of Bumblebee. Transformer Bumblebee in that new movie. John Cena is going to be the lead character. Also, rumors on CM Punk potentially fighting uh, in the UFC again. I actually have more news this weekend on CM Punk that debunks those rumors as being false. So make sure you guys go and check that. Off the Script Extra was uploaded on Monday. So you guys can go check that out if you did indeed miss that. Plus all the other videos. They'll be linked right, in with, right within this video in the annotation that you see on that screen. My buddy Rusty is riding this weekend. It is time. It's time, man. Rusty is going to be trekking over 150 miles over this over this weekend, and he's biking for the cure of MS. And if you guys want to get in your last-minute donations and help Rusty and motivate Rusty even more than he's already motivated, I'm going to leave you the link to his donation page down in the description below. If you guys know anybody with MS, if you have MS yourself and you, and you want to support Rusty on this huge venture that he's going to be undertaking this weekend, make sure you guys go and donate. I'll leave you his information down pinned at the top of the comment sections down below. So make sure you guys go and check that out. And if you feel the need to donate, please do so. It is a great cause for a great guy. He's going to be busting his ass this weekend, and I and everybody here on Off The Script wish him the very best of luck. I want to wish everybody that got sent out to WWE 2K's event this coming SummerSlam weekend. I won't be there, unfortunately. I don't know why. You know, I was uh, very salty about not being invited, and it has nothing to do with me not playing the game, because I did play the game. In fact, me and Rusty did a universe mode that was fucking awesome. But Rusty had other things come up. He didn't want to do it anymore because he thought the game sucked. I thought the game sucked. The game was boring. The people that played WWE 2K17 for the lifespan of that game, I swear to God, you deserve a fucking Nobel Peace Prize. You deserve some type of fucking award, man. I don't get it. I don't get how you did it. I don't understand how you did it, but those who played the game the entire year, you have my fucking utmost respect. I'm telling you that right now. The game died in January. Before we even got to the Royal Rumble, the game was dead. Now, I don't want to come off as a salty bitch, but the fact that YouTubers on this platform that have 20,000 subs who get like a thousand views a video, are getting flown out to New York City to meet and greet WWE superstars, to mingle, to, to have shit comped, drinks and food comped, to just be there and play the game early. That's going to make me salty, okay? It has nothing to do with me playing the game. Nothing. I know this for a fact. I know this for a fact. I know this for a fact because my favorite podcaster, Solomonster, got flown out last year he barely even touches the game. He does a sound off gamer here and there, but he got flown out because of the platform that he's on and how his podcast reaches multitudes of people. Now, why couldn't I be that guy? Why couldn't I be that guy? The numbers that this podcast does every weekend is amazing. For a, a small YouTube content creator like myself, that the numbers that this podcast is doing is not enough for these people is mind-boggling to me. It's mind-boggling to me. When I tweet during WWE events, Raw, SmackDown, pay-per-views, the audience that I am reaching, the fans that I have across social media are more vocal than 99%, 99% of the people that are getting flown out there. Now, I don't know why they wouldn't want somebody like me with the presence that I have on social media. I don't know why they wouldn't want somebody out there, you know, who, like me, when I talk, people listen. People trust me, okay? I've never bullshitted anybody in all my years on this fucking platform. I've never steered people wrong. I've always been honest with everybody. I've always been honest with myself. If that's not enough to get people to see that I'm genuine, then I don't know what I need to do. 
because the work ethic is there, the dedication and the passion and the love for just wrestling in general is there. I mean, if I was such a bad guy, would House of Glory be, you know, willing to give me the lead commentator role for their company? Would I be commentating for the likes of Cody Rhodes and Matt Seidel and, you know, upcoming Matt Riddle, right? Alberto El Patron, low key, the TNA Tag Team Champ, or the Global Force Wrestling Tag Team Champions, then TNA Tag Team Champions, LAX, Santana, and Ortiz, right? I don't, I don't understand that. If I'm mixed in with the business already, why wouldn't you want my reach to be there present? Why wouldn't you want my presence to be there when you know the audience that I can, I can reach for you guys? I'll be doing a hell of a lot of work for you. People believe and people trust in me. So yes, I was kind of salty. Yes, I was kind of salty. I don't understand it. And... It makes me honestly believe that the way that I am on here is never going to get me anywhere. The way that I am and the way that I present myself and the just in-your-face, blunt, no bullshit, no sugarcoating, anything type of attitude that I have on here. The fact that I will call it like I see it, the fact that I will say it sucks when you damn well know it sucks. And I'll never say anything is good because everybody else is saying it's good. You don't find nothing to be wrong in those types of people? How can you honestly sit there and tell me the majority of the WWE year has been good? You are fooling yourself. And the person looking back at you in the mirror will be laughing at you because that's total bullshit. How can you sit there and be positive all year long? When you know deep down in your soul that the fucking product is garbage. I gotta sit here and go over all the positives and talk about none of the negatives. You are the reason why the gaming industry sucks and these games fail every single fucking year. You're the reason why the WWE product sucks and sucks for the last five years and counting. Even before that. If it's bad, call it out and say it's bad. You're doing the right thing and the respectable thing. You're actually doing them a service by telling them that it sucks. If you're telling them that it's good and you know it's bad, they're going to continue giving you bad. And they'll have no passion to change anything. So yeah, I'm salty. And it's not because I, play, I didn't play the game. I played the game. Why would you want me to get through career mode when A, nobody is watching, B, it's fucking going nowhere, nowhere. I sit there and repeat the same matches every single fucking time I play it. Why would I want to play it if after fucking 10 hours of gameplay, I moved up zero ranking in the stats in my career? You start out at number 10 and after fucking 10 hours of gameplay, you're still number 10. What am I going to do to fucking move up the rankings? It doesn't depict anything that's real life. Nothing. Normally, when you fucking beat a champion, that puts you in line for a title shot. No, not in the game. Not in the game. If you beat the champion, doesn't that mean you move up the ranking? You should at least move up one or two most. No, of course not. So why would I play it? Why would I continue to put myself through that nonsense? Why? Universe Mode offered nothing but Wrestler A and Wrestler B. You make a match, you put it on a show, you put it on a pay-per-view, whatever the fuck you're doing, and then that's it. That's it. The best thing about WW2K Games is the creator character. The custom creations. The people that do that type of shit make the game more entertaining. Those are the people that keep you coming back and playing the game. Because they're the ones that keep the shit up to date. By the time the game comes out, it's already outdated. So yeah, I'm salty. Sometimes I feel like my hard work will go nowhere because of who I am and what I do and what I say. Maybe the type of person that needed is needed there is me. And the type of person like me. 
You know, I love Steven Larson. I love those guys. I listen to them every week. I love their point of view. But I know when I look at their numbers and I see me with off the script, their main platform is iTunes. They're blowing a lot of other guys out of the water on iTunes. Fine, great for them. Fine. But I doubt WW2K is looking at their iTunes numbers. Now, their video game content doesn't do well at all, per YouTube standards, and just based on the number of subscribers that they have, it's maybe like 5% of their audience has an interest in their universe mode and their WW2K content. But when they do a podcast, they have more reach. Their voices are heard to more people. They have 181,000 subscribers. I have 80. My podcast does better numbers than their podcast on YouTube. So why, how come I'm not there? Doesn't make sense to me. Doesn't make sense to me. And if you look at going in Ross Twitter too, I mean, they're dropping F-bombs. They're fucking saying what they feel. So why not me? Why not me? So I don't know what it is. Don't know what it is. But I want to congratulate my buddy Macho T for getting flown out there. He is a small YouTube channel with 26,000 subscribers. He's been all over WW2K18, giving you the latest news. As soon as it breaks, coverage of WW2K18. He's busted his fucking ass to get where he is. He's getting flown out there. He usually comes to the House of Glory shows. He was planning on coming to the House of Glory show on that Friday SummerSlam weekend for High Intensity 6, The Amazing Red versus Anthony Gangone. The Amazing Red's making his in-ring return after two-plus years. He's fighting for the House of Glory world title. Also rumored to be on the card is uh, Matt Riddle. He's going to be there. Um, I'm hearing some other names that were just recently let go from the WWE. <clears throat> Can't really say it right now, but uh, I heard that the grapevine possible. But it's going to be a big day. It's going to be a big weekend for House of Glory. Uh, we're going to have a big night. He was supposed to be there, but then plans change. He's getting flown out. Well, he actually lives in New York City, so all he has to do is hop on a train and get to the secret venue that they're holding this at. But, um, you know, congratulations to him, man. He busted his ass. And, um, you know, I just want to say, you know, thank you to him for his support. And, you know, good luck to him because it's going to be an exciting venture as well just to meet everybody and mingle and play the game early and talk to developers and talk to all the YouTubers that are going to be there. Tony Pizza Guy is going to be there. Denk, obviously, is going to be there with Michelle. Uh, Smack Talks and uh, Delzinski, you know, a bunch of other guys. But, uh, you know, it, it really, you know, real talk, it, it really disheartens you when you work all year and you're, you're in within the WWE product. And I know from an outside party looking in what needs to be done. My creative brain knows what needs to be done. I get pissed when WWE doesn't do it. They blatantly do the wrong thing. Same thing with these games. I wish I had more of a voice to talk to somebody and say, listen, this needs to be done. It should be this. It should be that. Yada, yada, yada. You know, I just, uh, it just makes you think that you're sitting here all these fucking months. You're busting your ass all year long. And, you know, none of, the, none of these companies, none of the bigger people, none of the YouTubers see it. You know, it's like these companies don't want to have you a part of their team or part of their squad. You know, to play to play test the game early. Some of these bigger YouTubers don't even want to hear from you. You know, they'll cite that they're busy. You know, it's it's all political bullshit. They don't want to do. They don't want anything to do with you because they don't want to be associated with you because you got some of this fucking bad stigma going on in the community. No, <laughs> people can't handle honesty. People can't handle the truth. Is that what it is now? People are running away from honesty and truth. I mean, what the fuck? I gotta sit here and lie. I gotta sit here and bullshit. I can't drop a fucking F-bomb here and there. Come on, man. Jesus Christ. Those are the first people to be dropping fucking every curse word under the sun when the camera's off. And then when they sit here, they'll fucking uh, be all goody two-shoes in front of the camera. Give me a break. What are you, fucking Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? No. Be yourself. I'm not hiding anything from anybody. You know? I'm not as animated as I am on the show. And people who have met me in person know that I'm not. I'm the fucking most laid-back shy guy you'll ever see but when I talk to somebody and I talk about something that's important to me or that I'm passionate about yeah I'm gonna fucking talk the same way I'm talking to you now but I'm not fucking in your face trying to pick a fight with fucking fake news entertainment you know, I won't be doing that you know I'm just a regular dude who loves wrestling 
and loves gaming and wants to be a part of the community. But I keep getting shunned for whatever reason. It just fucking pisses me off. You know? I've been at this for a little while now. One of these years, I want to just fucking break through and say, Hi, I'm here. I've been doing this in front of a large audience for a channel my size. Come on. I deserve my break, too. Seems like everybody else is getting their break before me. And they've been doing this for a year or two. I've been doing this for four or five years now. Come on. Anyway, moving on from, from that, I want to talk about uh, the new t-shirt design that's coming. It will be coming soon. Um, get off my TV version 2 redone. This one's going to be titled version 2.5, I, I assume. I'm throwing ideas back and forth with my man Connor, my artist from Pro Wrestling Tees. Uh, we're we're going to get something done. Hopefully, we can get uh, something done before SummerSlam so you guys can have that. Uh, speaking of SummerSlam, I don't know where the meet and greet's going to be. I have to pick a day, first of all. Uh, Saturday, I know Solid Monster's doing his. I don't want to do it on the same day as his. I'll probably do it either Friday or Sunday. I haven't decided yet, and I don't even know what venue it would be at. So we'll figure that out in a couple of weeks. Um, Justin Bailey hit me up for a new theme song. Uh, he wrote something for me as a rough draft. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. I liked it. I, I threw another name in there. Um, I wanted to get the words Jinder Mahal in the title of the song, uh, but uh, or the song itself, but uh, I don't know. He hasn't come back to me with a, another draft or so, so there is a new theme song being written. On top of that, I was live-streaming NXT reactions on Twitch. If you guys are not following my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash JD from New York. New York is spelled out, just not NY. Um, but my buddy Mikey, who does all my layouts and my pay-per-view thumbnails... He came to me and said that he's working on a SummerSlam layout and thumbnail. Fantastic. Love him. Um, but I also threw out the idea that after SummerSlam, I kind of want to rebrand. I want to I want, I refresh. So the layout that you see now for Off the Script is going to be redone. And he sent me something that was a rough draft, and I absolutely loved it. If you guys watch Bring It to the Table on the WWE Network, you see that layout. You see fucking that goon Rosenberg, and you see the... Uh, the topics at hand that are going to be discussed. And you see a little ticker at the bottom of the screen. And then on the right side is going to be, uh, you know, all my sponsors. So I don't have to go over it, you know, fucking 18 different times during the show. It'll, they'll all be there for you guys to see throughout the show. And then you're going to have a nice big section for the camera where you'll see my face and my reactions. It, it's going to be like uh, a sports center slash bring it to the table type present or presentation. So I'm looking forward to seeing the final product. We're going to go back and forth on... You know, some designs and some fixing, some fixings and some alter or alterations, some fixes rather, fixings. What am I fucking fixing? A salad? Yeah, I'll have some bacon chips and some croutons. You got some fucking cheese? Huh? I like the fucking grape tomatoes, motherfucker. I don't like a whole tomato sliced up. Come on, bro. This is Titus Catering. You got to give me top notch. Otherwise, uh, I got to dump you, you know? Um, so we're going to go back and forth on that. Can't wait to show you guys. That'll be probably after SummerSlam. So look forward to that. Some changes coming, some new music, because a lot of people, uh, you know, want Strowman out of the title of the song, and I, I agree with you. Strowman's probably the best thing on Monday Night Raw outside Samoa Joe. So we're making some changes to make the show a little bit more up to date, because it feels outdated right now. So look forward to that as well. If you guys are not following me on Twitter, please do so at JD from NY206. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that bell for notifications. When you hit that bell, it's gonna pop up with some other screen and say, please turn on all notifications if you want all uploads. If you don't turn on all notifications, you're only going to get some of my uploads. And you guys don't want some of my uploads. You want all of my uploads. So please make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. Turn on all notifications. If you guys are listening on iTunes, please make sure you leave me a five-star rating and a comment. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. I've been trying to keep up to date and get the iTunes version of this show up on a regular time quick. For you guys, because sometimes I get lazy, sometimes I forget. I'm like, oh, fuck, I didn't upload a uh, part one or a part two or a part three. So if you guys listen on iTunes and you prefer to listen to that, please make sure you do that as well. Other than that, thank you for all the love and support this weekend. We're going to get right into the news. But before I do that, I got to fucking show you Matt Hardy, man. The Awoken One. I got news on Matt Hardy this weekend as well. WWE may have found a nice little loophole so that uh, the Awoken Universe can be presented on WWE television. A word from the Awoken One with his Awoken brilliance, Matt Hardy, right before we get into the news and rumors right here on Off the Script. Oh. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I have broken that heart. This is JD from New York. Actually, delete JD from New York. I have cleaned this vessel. Make sure to check out his wondrous show off the script. It's absolutely delightful. Wow. The SummerSlam main event is being kept a big secret from everybody involved, everyone in the company, except obviously Vince McMahon, Brock Lesnar, and Paul Heyman. SummerSlam this year will be headlined by a massive fatal four-way match. Brock Lesnar will be defending his Universal Championship against Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, and my odds-on favorite to win the match, Samoa Joe. There's been a lot of buzz about the match, Especially since Paul Heyman announced that if Brock Lesnar loses the Universal title at SummerSlam, he will be leaving the WWE. Now, clearly this is not true, because Brock Lesnar's contract doesn't expire until after WrestleMania 34. There's no reason to believe, goons, that Brock Lesnar is just going to walk out of WWE, or Vince McMahon's going to allow Brock Lesnar to leave his contract and his obligations to WWE early. Why would he not be at WrestleMania 34? You, you think Vince McMahon doesn't want Brock Lesnar or will allow Brock Lesnar to not be on the WrestleMania 34 card in New Orleans? Come on, man. Use your brain a little bit. It just adds that, oh my God, what could possibly happen now? Or a what if to the title match. So it adds a little bit of intrigue. That's all it does. Speculation has been running wild, brother, about Brock Lesnar potentially returning to the UFC and dropping the belt at the event. Now, according to Dave Meltzer in the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, the finish, the ending of the Fatal 4-Way match is being kept secret from just about everybody. According to Meltzer's report, take it with a grain of salt, none of the writing team, none of the backstage producers, none of the participants, except Brock Lesnar, in this match, have been told the finish. One of the few people that knows is apparently Brock Lesnar, since his WWE contract states that he is told everything in advance that involves him. So everybody else will apparently be told the finish at the last moment. The reason for this, obviously, is because they have something big planned and don't want it to leak out. Typical with Brock Lesnar matches when he's in a big championship match. WWE always has to find a way to include Brock Lesnar in this controversial finish. Every one of his matches that is a big deal like this one always ends in controversy. Last time we seen Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam, he elbowed the shit out of Randy Orton and then F5'd Shane McMahon. And we didn't know if that was real, we didn't know if that was all scripted, but it came off as a worked shoot. So Brock Lesnar, again, will probably be involved in something along those lines that blurs the line from, well, is this real or is this planned? Work shoot. So they might have something big planned and don't want it to leak out. With all the rumors that have been floating around about Brock Lesnar over the past few weeks, this certainly adds to some more intrigue. And the match is right now unpredictable and nobody knows what will happen. Let the speculation begin about the fatal four-way for the Universal Championship at SummerSlam involving Lesnar, Reigns, Joe, and Strowman. Now, Paul Heyman was in the news. He apparently has gone over who he wants to be the next Universal Champion if Brock Lesnar does indeed drop the title. As we get closer to SummerSlam and the Brock Lesnar vs. John Jones rumors continue to pick up steam. People are wondering if Lesnar will drop the Universal Championship at SummerSlam. On this week's Raw, they clearly played into all those rumors when they had Paul Heyman announce that he and Lesnar would leave the WWE if they did not leave SummerSlam with the Universal title. The thing is, that may be a swerve, because Lesnar will likely not fight again in the UFC until the spring of 2018. Per the UFC, he has not entered into the USADA drug testing pool and he would need to re-enter the pool so that he can resume his suspension for his drug failure, stemming from his fight at UFC 200 against Mark Hunt. Dave Meltzer reported on MMAFighting.com that although Lesnar is very interested in the fight, he has not agreed to terms. In addition, uh, Tuesday night it was reported that Lesnar is scheduled for shows in September and the No Mercy pay-per-view, which is a Raw-branded exclusive pay-per-view. Now, before I even continue, 
those are sent out to the venues that are holding those events to get the marketing for that event. Always, plans are subject to change. Lesnar might have been advertised for that event and that pay-per-view months in advance. Clearly, this John Jones situa uh, situation has just arose, and clearly, plans are subject to change. So, Lesnar, at this point, may not even make No Mercy, and everything that you're hearing about Lesnar's schedule, especially with No Mercy being on the calendar and Lesnar potentially being there, uh, it might be out of the question now, and plans might change more, more times than not, those marketing schemes, those early marketing for the pay-per-views and the, and the events coming up at whatever arena it's going to be taking place at, they're sent so that people can, uh, uh, you know, get wind of what's going on. The, the venues can use that as marketing uh, tools to sell tickets for those events. Oh, look, Brock Lesnar is going to be advertised. Oh, look, John Cena is going to be advertised. Oh, look, Roman Reigns is going to be advertised. So they, they, they try and get people to buy tickets to those events. It's all a marketing ploy to get people to buy the tickets for those events. He is also locked in for WrestleMania, which I just went over. There's no reason to believe that Brock Lesnar will not be at WrestleMania. He will be there in a big, big match. That's the last pay-per-view on his current WWE deal, which means he would also be appearing on several episodes of Raw leading up to WrestleMania. So you know during the Royal Rumble build, Lesnar's going to be participating in the Royal Rumble, if not the champion. If he is the champion, uh, and all these rumors continue to be false about him dropping the title, and he is the Universal Champion going into the Royal Rumble, obviously, he's still going to be at the Royal Rumble. So, Lesnar will have those dates and those episodes to fill. So, he's not going anywhere. Brock is 100% at Mania, a WWE source told Meltzer. Not even a discussion any other way. 100%. You don't even need Meltzer or a WWE source to relay that to you. Lesnar will be there. Lesnar would need two months of uninterrupted full-time training to prepare for the John Jones fight. So he would not fight until at least June, at the earliest. July would make the most sense since UFC considers International Fight Week during the first week of July their biggest week of the year. Sports Illustrated, Sports Illustrated Justin Barrasso is reporting that Paul Heyman is advocating for the WWE to put the Universal title on none other than Samoa Joe. That would make sense since Heyman, along with Joey Mercury, helped put in a good word for Joe to get into the WWE. My gut tells me that WWE realizes that most fans believe that Lesnar will lose the WWE Universal title at SummerSlam, and they will swerve everyone and have him win. If WWE wants him to drop the title before the end of the year, then perhaps he can lose it to Joe in a one-on-one -on -one match at No Mercy in September. That is the other rumor going around. Lesnar can take a couple of months off and then return in time for the Royal Rumble as the company starts to build towards WrestleMania 34. A lot to digest there. A lot to digest there. Uh, with this stipulation being added in, um, you know, they want to add intrigue to this match. Will Lesnar lose the, uh, lose the title? You know, they're trying to build off this John Jones thing. They really are. So it's probably, it's probably already been spoken that Lesnar wants to fight John Jones. It's probably already been verbally agreed to that Lesnar will take a part in the fight against John Jones. And WWE is doing their way and doing what they need to do to build up intrigue for that fight because Lesnar more than likely will be a contracted worker for the WWE. I do not see Brock Lesnar walking away from the WWE even when he has to re redo his contract. It would be stupid. It would be stupid for Brock Lesnar to walk away from the WWE. The guy's got fucking easy money. He, he works 20 fucking dates a year. He fights three or four times a year. He has to do nothing. And, and it's not like he's wrestling fucking 30-minute Iron Man matches, one-hour Iron Man matches. It's not like he's fucking putting on matches like Kenny Omega and Kazuchika Okada over here. Guy comes in, suplexes you 10 fucking times, gives you an F5, and then he's done. None of his matches this year have been over five minutes. So this guy's got the easiest fucking schedule in all of WWE. Why would you walk away from that? Guaranteed $6 million, you're going to walk away from that to wrestle four times a year and more than likely not wrestle more than 30 minutes in the entire calendar year? So if Brock Lesnar at 40 years old wants to walk away from easy fucking money, he's got to be a fucking blithering idiot. He's not going to walk away from easy money. So my assumption is that Lesnar... When his contract is up with, you know, with WrestleMania coming up, more than likely Vince is going to give him what he wants. 
Vince doesn't want Brock Lesnar walking away. Vince knows Brock Lesnar is the biggest name in fucking pro wrestling, biggest name in all of sports and combat sports. You're not going to let that walk away. I'm sorry. Especially with this ongoing new agreement you know, the last couple of years with uh, UFC and WWE. You, you, you never think that you see Dana White and Vince McMahon trading talent back and forth. You think Vince McMahon wants to let his only way into the UFC world walk away in Brock Lesnar? Of course not. He's going to give Brock Lesnar whatever the fuck he wants. Because that's what Brock Lesnar does. Brock Lesnar opens up a whole new world for Vince McMahon. And all Vince McMahon cares about is this. And Brock Lesnar's going to make Vince McMahon the money. So Lesnar's not going anywhere. I would be jaw-fucking-dropped shocked if Brock Lesnar walks away from the WWE. With the money that he's making and the fucking light, light, light schedule that this guy's working. I would be shocked. It's not really a good financial decision to walk away from WWE if you are Brock Lesnar. So, WWE, WWE could potentially be throwing this stipulation in there. If Lesnar loses, he's going to walk away from the WWE as a ploy. Now, we all thought Lesnar would probably be dropping the title to somebody in this fatal four-way. Now with this stipulation that Heyman pretty much laid out on the table on Monday Night Raw, now we could see Brock Lesnar win. And it's got me thinking now... Does it make more sense for Brock Lesnar to lose the title, or does it make Brock? It doesn't make more sense for Brock Lesnar to win this match and retain the title. It's got me thinking now. WWE can book this match in a way that fucks Samoa Joe out of this potential win at SummerSlam. Maybe something in the match happens that takes Samoa Joe out of the match. In the match. And it forces WWE to give Samoa Joe a one-on-one -on -one rematch with Brock Lesnar. What would be better, in your eyes, for WWE to do? For Samoa Joe to win the Universal Championship by the Fatal 4-Way? By pinning a Reigns or a Strowman? Because I don't see Lesnar being pinned in that match. I don't see Lesnar being pinned at all. If anybody loses this match, to me, it's going to be Braun Strowman. I don't see Roman Reigns being pinned. I don't see Brock Lesnar being pinned. If Joe doesn't win the match, I can see either Strowman or Joe being pinned in this match. That's my assumption of that. But what would you rather have? Joe win the match by not pinning Brock Lesnar and winning the title? Or would you rather see Lesnar retain, go on to No Mercy, drop the title to Joe in a one-on-one -on -one match, which would probably get Samoa Joe over in a bigger way than winning it in the Fatal 4-Way, and then Brock Lesnar could go on his way, take the rest of the year off until the Royal Rumble, and then we see him... Do what he's got to do for WrestleMania season. All while entering the USADA pool again. You know, filling his dates for the suspension. Getting back into that UFC mentality. So by the time that the summer comes, and after WrestleMania is over, he will be ready for that one-on-one -on -one fight with John Jones. What do you guys think? You guys think Samoa Joe should win the title at SummerSlam? Or you think Samoa Joe should win the title in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Brock Lesnar and No Mercy? I think it would probably be better if Samoa Joe beats Brock Lesnar one-on-one. -on -one. We continue that for another month. Why wouldn't that be entertaining, right? We want to see this continue. We don't, we don't want to see it come to an end at SummerSlam. They've been doing big numbers. Samoa Joe has made himself into a main event player on Monday Night Raw with this Brock Lesnar storyline. It would probably be, probably be beneficial for him to beat Lesnar one-on-one, -on -one, then win it at the Fatal 4-Way in SummerSlam by pinning a Braun Strowman or a Roman Reigns. Because the main thing you want to do here is put over Joe in a big way. You want to put over anybody in a big way. And how do you do that? You got to pin the beast. By pinning the beast, I say that's the best way to do it. To get somebody over by pinning Brock Lesnar and having them beat Brock Lesnar one-on-one -on -one for the Universal title. Instead of taking the easy way out and having him not be pinned, yet he could still lose the title. That's my assumption of that. So then what do you do if Joe is the next Universal Champion? Lesnar's on his own, right? Strowman's in the mix. You got Reigns in the mix. You could probably put Wyatt in the mix. Finn Balor could probably be moved into the Universal Championship picture. By that point, hopefully the Hardys are awoken. Maybe Jeff Hardy in the Universal Championship mix by the end of the year. WWE's got several different options to do, especially if they do the shakeup. We could see even new competitors and new challengers come Samoa Joe's way. We don't know yet. Having Samoa Joe the champion while Brock Lesnar takes the rest of the year off 
I think is the best way to do it. You get the title back on Monday Night Raw. You got just as legit athlete in Samoa Joe handling the title duties, right? There's nobody more legit than Samoa Joe on that on that roster. If you want somebody in a similar in a similar build and a similar similar makeup to Brock Lesnar, clearly it's Samoa Joe. I mean, Samoa Joe is the most dominant. He is the best heel. He is the best promo on Monday Night Raw right now. Why wouldn't you want to give him the championship? He could be your destroyer. You can make another main event star out of Samoa Joe. I would have Samoa Joe hold the title all the way to WrestleMania. I would have Samoa Joe hold the title. I would have him run and destroy everybody on Monday Night Raw. I would have nobody even come close to beating Samoa Joe at this time until WrestleMania 34. Now, I would not have a Monday Night Raw superstar. I'm thinking long term here. You guys can see where I'm going with this. I'm thinking long term. Keep in mind that WWE has been flip-flopping the pay-per-views, right? No Mercy last year was a SmackDown pay-per-view. This year, it's a Raw pay-per-view. Last year, Hell in a Cell was a Monday Night Raw pay-per-view. This year, it's a SmackDown pay-per-view. So they're probably going to be doing the same thing with Elimination Chamber. They're doing the same thing with TLC. This year, TLC is a Monday Night Raw pay-per-view. I don't know what SmackDown's going to get in December. I don't know. But this year, or 2018 rather, when the Elimination Chamber has its turn... On the pay-per-view calendar. Last year it was a SmackDown. Oh, this year it was a SmackDown pay-per-view. Next year it's going to be a Monday Night Raw pay-per-view. That's just been the way it's been going. I would have a SmackDown superstar win the Royal Rumble. And I would have a Monday Night Raw superstar, clearly, being that's a Raw branded pay-per-view, win the Elimination Chamber. Samoa Joe would go through everybody on Monday Night Raw. Reigns, Strowman, uh, Wyatt, you name it, they fall. Joe walks into WrestleMania as the WWE Universal Champion. Finn Balor enters the Elimination Chamber and wins the Elimination Chamber. I would not have any talk of Finn Balor getting his title shot this year. I would have Finn Balor out of title contention this year. You re-up those talks in 2018 and you give Finn Balor the opportunity to get his Universal Championship match at WrestleMania against Samoa Joe. And at that point, the Demon walks into New Orleans... You know, New Orleans is one of the most haunted cities in all of the United States of America. You would have the demon, the ghostly demon, the fucking demon, Finn Balor, walk into WrestleMania, right? And you would have him slay the Destroyer, slay the man who beat Brock Lesnar, Samoa Joe, and win back his Universal Championship. That's what I would do. What does Brock Lesnar do at WrestleMania? You put him against Braun Strowman in a battle of the fucking Giants. Roman Reigns, what do you do with Roman Reigns? You have him in an interpromotional match, or, well, it probably wouldn't be interpromotional at this point because John Cena's a free agent. He could do whatever the hell he wants. Roman Reigns versus John Cena. That's what you do. That's what I would do there. And depending how long this thing goes with Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, I would have Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. I don't know how long they're going to have this go. I don't know how, how, how large WWE's threshold is for patience. You know, I would drag this out. You know, drag it out. Have them have them win the tag team championships. Have them slay this team and that team and then start building dissension later next year. Okay, that's what I would do. And then you can do your women's match at WrestleMania. Uh, Charlotte versus Bayley. I got news on Bayley today. You know, you could do Charlotte versus Asuka for, summer, uh, for uh, WrestleMania. I'm thinking long term here. I'm thinking Balor wins the Elimination Chamber. Joe wins the Universal Championship either at SummerSlam or No Mercy in September. Holds the title all the way to WrestleMania. But the main thing here is Joe holding the title all the way till WrestleMania. Being that legit, dominating destroyer. Be the man to take the place of the Beast. And have, a, and have the title go into WrestleMania on Joe's waist and drop it to Finn Balor. AJ Styles would then win the Royal Rumble. You got Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. You make WrestleMania as big as you possibly can with well-thought-out ideas, unlike SummerSlam, where they're just fucking putting matches together for the sake of putting matches together with absolutely no build. Absolutely no build. That's my plan for SummerSlam going all the way till WrestleMania for the Universal Championship. That's who I want to win. Samoa Joe should be the next Universal Champion. But being that Paul Heyman has laid this new stipulation out, if they don't walk out of SummerSlam with the title, then they leave. That could all be negated by having Lesnar win, and then clearly Lesnar can then drop the title to Samoa Joe in September at no mercy. That is my plan. Let me know what you guys think about all of that. News on Enzo Amore. Potential reason why he has backstage heat. 
and the backstage heat that he's getting now, WWE officials are thinking about moving him away from Vince McMahon and off Monday Night Raw and off of SmackDown Live. There's been a ton of rumors circulating about Enzo Amore having backstage heat with the WWE locker room. It all began several weeks ago with a story that suggested Enzo was kicked off the WWE bus by Roman Reigns during a recent European tour. The story gained some traction over the past week or so, with WWE even mentioning Enzo's backstage heat on the WWE Network on Bring It to the Table. This came on the show, Bring It to the Table, where JBL and Corey Graves confirmed the heat that Enzo has with the WWE locker room, which I was surprised by. That's dipping well into the cookie jar and kind of blurring you know, what we see on television and what happens in the backstage locker room. So Vince McMahon wants to cancel all these shows for kind of breaking kayfabe, but they broke kayfabe on that certain segment on Bring It to the Table. Now, this is what Graves said on Bring It to the Table, and I quote, If you are on a European tour for 12 days deep, and he's going on and on and on about how he partied with The weekend in L.A., you're going to get tired of hearing about it. There's a limit. And when you're on the road that much, that'll wear on your nerves. JBL also said that the odds are completely against Enzo based on previous cases of guys getting kicked out of the locker room. Now, according to Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, there was an incident that was the final straw for Enzo and the WWE locker room. Enzo reportedly overheard on the phone saying to somebody about the wrestling business in a negative way. He was also apparently bragging about how much money he makes over the phone in the same conversation. News also broke on Thursday this week, yesterday, that WWE is considering moving Enzo Amore down to NXT or 205 Live. We don't know what will happen with Enzo right now, but we will have to wait and see if that is in the plans. So Enzo is in some fucking hot water. So we don't know, man. We don't know what's going on. What is the best thing for Enzo to do? Well, I would have never broke up him and Big Cass. That's number one. But now that all this new information is out, and this clearly happened before they turned Big Cass heel and broke him away from Enzo, this might be some of the reason why they broke Big Cass away from Enzo Amore. That they seen this guy was a troublemaker, they wanted nothing to do with him, they seen that Big Cass was the moneymaker anyway, so they kind of accelerated Big Cass's push. Now, I don't think Big Cass is ready for a singles role yet, but this could be the reason why they broke Enzo Amore away from Big Cass. Just letting you know. I still don't think Big Cass is ready. I don't think he's going to succeed on Monday Night Raw. I don't think it's going to be a long while before they even see him in that light. Because right now all I see is a modern day version of Test. Test was great. Test looked great. But there was something missing about him. He's got the size. You know, and uh, you know, Big Cass really doesn't have all that big of a muscular body. You know? But his promo work is coming along. He's got that dominating size that WWE likes. He's just missing something. Because right now, you know, like Meltzer said, all I see is a big WWE superstar. Someone who's big. Someone who's tall. But he's missing that certain something that's going to get him over the hump. I don't know what it is. Right now, you're getting heat on Cass because he's, you know, picking apart Enzo, who's a fan favorite. But how long is that going to last? Is that momentum, is that heat going to still be hot when Big Cass feuds with somebody else? In fact, it might have a negative effect on Big Cass by feuding him with the Big Show. Because nobody gives a shit about the Big Show. <laughs> Big Show! You know, you don't want, nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see that. So that might work against Big Cass. But what do you do with Enzo? What do you do with Enzo? Putting him on 205 Live? Why? You could probably cast him there if you really want to fucking stick it to him. Because that show is fucking deader than fucking uh, a corpse that's been rotting for about fucking two weeks. Dead! Nobody wants to be on 205 Live. I don't think the guys that are on 205 Live now want to be on 205 Live. Seriously, that show is dead. I don't even know why the show still has fucking airtime on the WWE Network. I would cancel it. Cancel it. What WWE needs to do with 205 Live is get rid of 205 Live, put all the cruiserweights on Monday Night Raw exclusively, and get rid of the weight limit. I didn't mind the weight limit for the Cruiserweight Classic. But the weight limit... Being that it's a fucking show and a segment on Monday Night Raw, get rid of the weight limit. You're holding those guys back. I don't want to see them exclusively on that show because I don't watch that show. I want to see guys like Cedric Alexander. I want to see guys like Rich Swan. I want to see guys like Jack Gallagher. 
and Neville. That's why Austin Aries left. You don't want to be tied to a ball and chain on 205 Live when that show is dead. It barely breaks the top 20 on the WWE Network. Give me a break. Get rid of the weight limit. You can have anybody that's, you know, that smaller guy compete in the cruiserweight division. You know? We can have Neville on Monday Night Raw defending the title. Or we can have, you know, a, a Cedric Alexander wrestle a Miz. Or we can have a Rich Swan wrestle a, I don't know, uh, Dean Ambrose, for example. You know? Something like that. Or Finn Balor wrestle a Neville. Why wouldn't you want to see that on Monday Night Raw? Why wouldn't you want to see that in the main event of Monday Night Raw? Those guys could tear the fucking house down. WWE's handcuffing themselves with this weight limit. The more I think about it, the more it fucking pisses me off. 205 for a weight limit? Did WCW back in the day have a fucking weight limit? For their cruiserweights? No. How many people from that cruiserweight champion, uh, that, that cruiserweight division went on to be world champion? Rey Mysterio? Chris Benoit? Right? Chris Jericho? Eddie Guerrero? Why do you want to hold these guys back? I look at Neville... I could see him easily being at the top of the card on Monday Night Raw. Easily. If the Cruiserweight division did anything at all, it gave Neville the platform and the outlet to work his heel persona. Now that he's pretty much conquered that, he's got it nailed down, he's, he was great in the ring before that, now it's time to move him away from there. That's why Austin Aries left. You, you, don't, think, you don't think Austin Aries wanted to be on Monday Night Raw with the Rollinses and the fucking Joes? and the Ambroses, right, and the Reigns, and the Ballers. Who the fuck wouldn't want to see Finn Balor versus Austin Aries? Or Seth Rollins versus Austin Aries? Why are you handcuffing these guys? Neville should be on the main roster on Monday Night Raw. I'd love to see Cedric Alexander and Rich Swan. You are holding these guys back. Holding them back, right? Tony Nese got a great look, great in the ring. I enjoyed Tony Nese the minute I saw him in the Cruiserweight Classic. No M. Dar. I really don't care for Noam Amdar. Everybody says Noam Amdar is great, great, great. It's boring. Boring to me. But people like Grand Metallic. Where the fuck is that guy at? Jack Gallagher. Great. He brought Neville to some of the best matches in the Cruiserweight division. Arya Davari is great. Great talent. Right? You got... Uh, who else was there? I don't even fucking know anymore. Who the fuck they got? Uh, uh, Brian Kendrick, right? TJ Perkins. Those are great fucking talents. Why do you want to limit them to one show? They got to get rid of this weight limit. Got to get rid of it. Putting Enzo there, they might put Enzo there just to fucking stick it to him. Like I said, show's dead and they want nothing to do with him. Make him suffer the ultimate punishment. Put him on a dead show where he'll do nothing and he'll be fucking stuck on a stranded island somewhere with no way to get off. This ain't Tom Hanks, right? You know, they'll have Enzo fucking going stir crazy talking to a fucking volleyball. He'll be talking to his fucking microphone thinking it's a real person. Give me a break. But to me... If you want Enzo to succeed, you know, deep down, with all the bullshit that's going on with Enzo Amore, he's still popular. He's still a big merchandise seller. He's someone that people want to see and mimic, and they love the catchphrase. They love his shtick. Put him in NXT. Put him down in NXT. He'll get over there. It'll be familiar territory for him. He, he'll be one of the biggest names on the roster. He can get everybody fucking hyped. He might actually get to work on his wrestling skills because Enzo is still green as fucking grass in the ring. You know, Big Cass really did make him look good. Big Cass is no better, but standing next to Big Cass, they complimented each other. They were a very, very good tag team. If you guys remember, way back when, during that Roadblock pay-per-view where we seen Triple H and Dean Ambrose for the WWE Championship, on that same card, we seen uh, Enzo and Cass versus The Revival. That was a damn good 15-minute fucking tag team match, man. That was both... Uh, when both teams were, were both coming out of NXT. That was a damn good fucking tag team match. Me and my brother watched that, and he even and he even liked the match. I'm like, he's like, why can't we do this on, on the main roster? Why can't we see tag team wrestling like this on the main roster? You know? But I think Enzo would be beneficial to NXT. It'll be good for him, and it'll be good for the brand. He'll sell live tickets for the, for the touring shows that they do. People will come out and want to see Enzo and sing along to him and chant along with him. S-A-W-F-T -S soft, right? Uh, he'll sell merchandise for NXT, so he'll be a better addition for NXT. It'll be good for the brand, it'll be good for him. And to me, WWE really needs to start getting on the ball with getting a mid-card title in NXT. Whether it's a, a fucking 
uh, TV title or something along the line. Something that, so, something that is defended on weekly television. You know, one of you guys even mentioned to me on Twitter, instead of doing one hour of NXT, let's do 90 minutes of NXT. Get an, an added match on there. I would love that. 90 minutes of NXT every single week with a television championship. Because as you see the talent coming into NXT, we got Donovan Dijak reportedly coming in from Ring of Honor. Kyle O'Reilly debuted this week against Aleister Black in a fantastic 23-minute main event. Bobby Fish is there, Drew McIntyre, Bobby Roode, Roderick Strong's coming along, Aleister Black, Andrade Cien Almas, Johnny Gargano, before you know it, Tommaso Ciampa's gonna be coming back, right? You got Cassius Ono, Hideo Itami, Bebe, Adam Cole's coming in, you know? They got a lot of guys coming in. Plus, the women's division is gonna be refilled. WWE's not gonna sign all the talent from the Mae Young Classic, but at least half of those women are gonna be signed, and most of them are going to NXT. So NXT's roster is going to be stacked. Adding a television title for the mid-card guys, Velveteen Dream as well. He's coming along nicely, right? It'll give those mid-card guys, no way Jose is another one. It'll give those mid-card guys a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, you know, opportunity to fight for something. Not everybody could be in the main event scene. If you're watching NXT closely, you got Drew McIntyre and Bobby Roode right now. Roderick Strong's hanging around. They're trying to build him up as this sympathetic babyface to get his hands on Bobby Roode. Drew McIntyre, Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode's probably moving up to WWE. Main roster, whether he goes on Raw and SmackDown, I don't really give a shit. It's going to be great to see the glorious one on the main roster. The matches that could be made on either brand excite me. Um, but the main event scene is coming along nicely in NXT. And you could see the, the pieces falling into play. They got Drew McIntyre now. Roderick Strong's going to be there when Bobby Roode is... Gone from NXT, you're going to have Aleister Black move in. Adam Cole, I'm sure, potential to be the face of that brand. He's going to be thrusted in there into the main event scene. So the main event scene is going to be taking uh, up a lot of time between those four guys. So those other guys, those undercard guys, like the Garganos and the Velveteen Dreams and the Onos and the Itamis, the Enzos, if they move in back down to NXT, they need something to fight for. I think it's about time we get a nice little tournament going on and crown our first ever NXT television champion. That's what I say. And I know you guys will be excited for that as well. I'd be fucking thrilled about that. I think it's time. NXT gets bumped to 90 minutes. We have a television title on NXT defended weekly. And we get something, uh, you know, for everybody else to fight for down there. And with the influx of talent coming in, I think that 90 minute extension is perfect. Two hours would be too long. 90 minutes would be perfect. You can add a couple backstage segments, another match. It would be great. That's my plan for Enzo. Move him down to NXT and don't worry about 205 Live. 205 Live to me is absolutely fucking dead and buried. Get rid of the 205 weight limit. Put them on Monday Night Raw exclusively. Try and mimic what WCW did with the Cruiserweights. Neville against the Rollinses. Have Neville be the Cruiserweight champion, but don't limit him to not fight a Rollins or a Balor or a Reigns or a Joe. Those guys, I'm sure, would love to fight a guy like Neville. I'm sure us as fans would love to see Neville challenge people on the main roster. So cut the weight limit out. Let those guys breathe. Give them what they need to do. Give them time to do what they need to do to get that division over. Because right now, it is stale and fucking dead as anything else that WWE has ever came up with. They need to let the fucking ball and chain go. They got to give these guys reason to fly and generate excitement from Monday Night Raw. That was the reason why they brought them to Monday Night Raw. To be different. Instead, Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn have sank their teeth into them, and they're nothing but formulaic garbage, just like everything else on Monday Night Raw. That is my plan. That's what I would do with the shake-up. You want to fucking shake things up? Shake the fucking thing up already. And do what needs to be done. Enough of this fucking formulaic garbage. You got people working in that company that don't give a fucking shit about anything. No brains in that company. They're okay with mediocrity. I don't understand this. I'm here giving you gold. I don't know how these people who are working for the company can't think of fucking ways to be creative. It's like a fucking playground over there. I'd be having a field day. These guys don't fucking care. Enzo, back to NXT would be the best move for him and the WWE. What would be the best move for you guys? That's where I gotta get more of my plugs in. What would be the best move for you guys for SummerSlam is to get your merchandise. If you don't get it now, you might be too late. Barbershop Window is still offering you guys 20% off 
all of your merchandise on my online store. My online store only. Barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. Enter coupon code JD17 at checkout. And make sure you guys apply that 20% off discount on your entire purchase. Whether you guys want one t-shirt or all nine. I got nine different designs, including the ever-popular JD is Negan and the new Get Off My TV hit list. Well, it's not new, but it's the newest one there. Also, Roman Reigns, Big Show. You got Dana Brooke, Eva Marie, Get Off My TV. You got the version 2, which is a classic Get Off My TV, with Strowman, Ryback, Big Show, and Kane on there. So make sure you guys go and do that. Barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. Coupon code JD. 17 at checkout. Did AJ Styles botch the United States title match finish at Battleground after all? Battleground was a horrific piece of shit. It was not only capped off by a Punjabi prison match, which saw the return of <laughs> Great Khali for one night only, thank fucking Christ, but it also featured one of the screwiest finishes that you might have seen during a United States Championship match in recent memory. Kevin Owens rolled up AJ Styles for a pin after a, ref a referee bump and a dazed referee counted to three. Kevin Owens won the United States title once again, but many people were left wondering what really was going on. The referee seemed to hesitate before throwing his hand down for a third, uh, a third time, uh, a three count, leaving some to wonder if this was truly planned. Now, according to sources, Vince McMahon changed the match finish in the middle of this contest. New reports seem to conflict this previous story. While some are sticking to the notion that Vince changed his mind, others are placing the blame now on AJ Styles. The Wrestling Observer Newsletter says that they are receiving different reports from people who are usually in the know about these things. Some say Vince changed the match. So it would make sense for Chris Jericho to return on the next SmackDown Live for one night only so far and try to take Kevin Owens' title instead of AJ's. Still others are saying Styles was supposed to kick out of the roll-up pin, but he just did not. Uh, well, what does Chris Jericho have to do with this? I mean, was Chris Jericho a late phone call in the evening? Yeah, uh, Chris, we need you on Monday Night Raw because Battleground was so fucking terrible. Uh, we want to shock the fans and give you uh, some extra pay during the week, and uh, we need you on SmackDown Live to boost ratings because Battleground was terrible, because Battleground was awful, because we had the Great Khali in the main event of Battleground 2017. Yes, you heard me correct. Great Khali in the main event of Battleground at 2017. So we need you. We need the list. We need your scoff. We need your light-up jacket. We need you on SmackDown, bro. Can you do it? Can you do it? Okay, I'll see you later. That's the way that went. Jericho was only back for one night. Jericho was only back for obvious political reasons because they fucked up and they were scrambling to get, oh, how can we put on a good show? Yeah, let's call Chris Jericho. So the feeling backstage at the time, when it happened, was they saw a botch finish and AJ was said to be very unhappy about the way it all went down. This controversy has to be why the current program with KO and AJ has been centered around Kevin Owen getting his shoulder up, but the referee counting anyway. Therefore, Daniel Bryan decided he was going to appoint a referee uh, that knew what he was doing in Shane McMahon. So Kevin Owens and AJ Styles will get another shot at SummerSlam. Let's hope that they have a better result since they have a new referee in the mix. I was hoping that this last match on SmackDown Live was going to be the end-all, be-all, and that we'd get Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens because that's the way that they were leading. But it looks like uh, we will get Kevin Owens versus Shane McMahon anyway, but not at SummerSlam. So this AJ Styles situation will be over by SummerSlam, and then AJ can move on to something else with the United States Championship, and then Kevin Owens can have Shane McMahon inside Hell in a Cell. That's what I'm predicting. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, people are wondering why didn't Daniel Bryan appoint himself the referee for the match instead of Shane McMahon, because that's what people were hoping for. Uh, the reason why Shane McMahon is the referee in this match is because I'm assuming, and I'm 100% positive, I'm pretty sure, that Shane McMahon's going to take a bump in this match. And Daniel Bryan, they, they will not allow Daniel Bryan to take a bump in this contest with Kevin Owens and AJ Styles. So, for those wondering, that's probably the reason why. But, I mean, at this point, who gives a shit, you know? Who gives a shit if it was a botch finish at all? Botches happen all the time. It just says Dana Brooke. I mean, every other fucking week there's a botch with Dana Brooke. You know, whether she's on television or not, I'm sure she's botching when none of us are watching. So, botches happen. You know, even the greats, 
have an off night. AJ Styles is one of the greats. And he had an off night. So what? So WWE corrected their mistake. The, the, the title is back on AJ Styles the way that they originally planned. All right, now we got another match at SummerSlam with Shane McMahon in the mix. WWE could get this Shane McMahon match with Kevin Owens out of their system. And they kind of have just been playing off the fact that, you know, this was a botched finish and they went with that on the next SmackDown as well, right? They did the triple threat and then they gave Kevin Owens the one-on-one match and they just kept this, uh, uh, I got uh, I got my shoulder up off the mat type of deal. Same thing that we've seen in Battleground. They, they, they just kind of, you know, did it in different ways to keep the storyline going. So a botch, an, an unintentional botch has turned into an ongoing storyline to get another title match out of these guys and then eventually get us to Shane McMahon and Kevin Owens. So, was it really a botch after all? Is it something that we're going to fucking crucify AJ Styles over? No. It doesn't matter. The title switched hands. They got it back on the guy that they originally want. They're going to get a match out of it again, hopefully, finally, once and for all, at SummerSlam, and then we're going to get AJ uh, to move on to something else and then Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens. There you go. Simple as that. A botch has turned into an ongoing storyline. Just take it for what it is. Even the be- even the best fuck up. Nobody's perfect. So whether you want to blame AJ Styles or not, who cares? They turned it into a storyline to get more matches out of this and then lead into another feud with Kevin Owens. I want to talk about this Karen Jarrett situation. As you guys know, Braun Strowman was at a bar in Tennessee when Raw was in Nashville, right? Raw was in Nashville, Tennessee. And Braun Strowman was at a bar with others. You know, I think Sasha Banks and Bailey and Matt Hardy were there. Rey Mysterio was in attendance. Bunch of road people. Braun Strowman was there at the bar. Karen Jarrett comes up to him and asks Braun Strowman for an autograph. Because Karen's son is a huge fan of Braun Strowman and would have loved to have an autograph from the Monster Among Men. Now, according to reports, this is by Dave Meltzer. According to reports, several reports, by the way, Braun Strowman didn't know who Karen Jarrett was. He told Karen Jarrett, fuck your son, and then went about his business. Karen Jarrett pretty much cut a promo on Braun Strowman there, ripped into him, told him that she was going to tell the son's father, which is apparently Kurt Angle, right? The Raw GM, how he treated her. Braun Strowman didn't want this to get back to anybody in the WWE. He begged, he got on his knees and pleaded with Karen Jarrett not to say anything to Kurt Angle, right? Apparently Kurt Angle is fucking super Saiyan, uh, you know, he's gonna fucking just kick your ass, he's like one of the most fucking toughest guys walking the earth, apparently. Braun Strowman didn't want to get back to Kurt Angle. And Karen Jarrett threatened him by telling WWE officials. So, we got what we said... And whether you want to believe it or not, I don't know, but there's been several sources citing that this is a legit story. I don't know whether Braun Strowman's going to pay the piper for this one. I don't know, but apparently this is a true story. Now, Karen Jarrett had a conference call with Global Force Wrestling on Wednesday. Karen Jarrett was asked about this incident with Braun Strowman. It was apparently Jeff Hardy's CD release party in Nashville. The incident occurred after Raw on July 17th, and there were several wrestlers from Global Force Wrestling and WWE that saw what went down. Jarrett downplayed the reports on the conference call. She said, Oh my goodness, I can clear the air. It was a silly incident where two people in the wrestling business were playing their characters, being silly, and it got blown out of proportion. The fact that it's still in the news and it's still being talked about, that's a question that you look, uh, that you took the time to ask, and I think it's hysterical. She added, and I quote, it's silliness. It's the wrestling business, we had fun with it, and somebody took it and turned it into something more than it was. Essentially, as first reported by Meltzer and the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Jarrett went up to Strowman and asked for an autograph for her son. Strowman apparently not recognizing who she was, he seemed to be either drunk or in a bad mood, said something derogatory to her. There was one one report that claimed he said, fuck your son, but others that were... I still find that to be hilarious. I would have loved to seen Braun Strowman just utter the words, fuck your son, to Karen Jarrett. I would pay pay cover charge to get in there, just to see that. But others were uh, there in attendance, did not hear what was said, but several people heard him apologize to Jarrett uh, after Jarrett went off, 
And when she told him that her son is also the son of Kurt Angle, there have been conflicting reports on whether or not he actually got down on his knees to apologize. At this point, I mean, who the fuck cares? Who cares? I just find this to be hilarious. You know? Um, nobody's really gonna know. Nobody's really gonna know unless you were there in attendance and you ask somebody in attendance and they're gonna be open and honest with you. You're probably not gonna find out what happened until one of these people is just fucking clear of the wrestling business and they're on some random podcast and they're asked about this incident. You know, you're not gonna know unless that happens or if you were physically there on that evening at that moment when Braun Strowman said, fuck your son. So, I don't know, man. Uh, I don't think this is going to do anything to Braun Strowman's push. You know, God forbid he fucking didn't know who Karen Jarrett was. Oh, my God. But we discussed this already. I mean, any mother in that situation would probably be pissed. Fuck your son is not really something you want to say to a mother of a, of a son who is a fan of you. You know, uh, Braun Strowman should be grateful that people want to come up to Max for a fucking autograph. But uh, not really the most professional way to go about it if that is indeed what happened. Fuck your son. Is exactly what Braun Strowman said to Karen Jarrett. Uh, I think this is a dead story now. I just wanted to re- reiterate that to you because it was in the news this week what Karen Jarrett's side of the story was here. Apparently, she downplayed everything, saying that there was uh, nothing but silliness going on. It was nothing but two people in the wrestling business playing their characters in public. Sure. Sure. So, whatever the case may be, it happened. It's in the news. Take it as you want. I really don't give a shit right now. The next time we're going to see Braun Strowman is on pay-per-view in a fatal four-way, so I doubt uh, anything's going to happen to Braun Strowman's push because he told Karen Jarrett, go fuck yourself, in a bar. So we'll see what happens if Braun Strowman is punished for this down the line. Uh, Probably not, but I just want to let you guys know what what the latest was on Karen Jarrett and the Braun Strowman situation on uh, on that particular day during Monday Night Raw or after Monday Night Raw during Jeff Hardy's CD release party. We're going to talk about this Bailey situation. I want to talk about this Road Dog situation, but I'll save that for tomorrow's show. Uh, I don't have much news uh, right now. I pretty much went over everything that I have in my notes outside of a few things for SummerSlam with uh, Jinder Mahal, the modern-day failure Raha, and Shinsuke Nakamura in the main event or the WWE Championship match. I got John Cena plans that I'm going to rant about uh, on tomorrow's show as well. We'll save the Road Dog stuff for tomorrow. I think that'll be. Uh, I think that'll go well with the other ranting that I'll be doing. On Saturday's show, but we'll talk about this Bailey situation. Apparently, Bailey uh, has suffered a shoulder injury during her match with Nia Jax. Um, WWE has confirmed the news as they have posted a video on her being checked out backstage on their YouTube channel. There's no word on how long she will be out of action, but as I record this, apparently, people are telling me that she is a no go for SummerSlam with less than three weeks to go. It looks like her Raw Championship match with Alexa Bliss now is off. She was told to rest her shoulder until next week, and the hope is that the swelling will have gone down enough so that doctors can give a timetable for her recovery time. Uh, I quote, We've determined the injury is shoulder-related and that she will be going under further diagnostic testing later this week to determine the extent of the injury and also reestablish a timetable for her recovery. End quote. Dr. Chris Amon said in a statement to WWE.com. So that is the latest on Bailey. Um, I'm 50-50 on this. I really am. Um, we don't know until reports come out from a credible source that the match is indeed off. WWE will probably do a number one contenders match if that is the case. It'll probably probably be again in typical repeat fashion with the non-existent women's division on Monday Night Raw. It'll be Nia Jax versus Sasha Banks. And then we'll get Sasha Banks winning and going on to fight Alexa Bliss at SummerSlam for the Raw Women's Championship, which all of long should have been the championship match for SummerSlam. Bailey, you would have probably saved her a fucking injury if you automatically just booked the match the way it should have been booked with Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss in a false count anywhere match at SummerSlam. This is WWE and karma having karma bite WWE in the ass. This is what you get for making a poor booking decision. Now, this is if Bayley is legitimately hurt. The other thing that I'm thinking is that WWE knows they failed Bayley miserably and that she's right now irreparable on Monday Night Raw. Everything that they've done with Alexa Bliss and Bayley and that fucking Extreme Rules kendo stick on a pole match where Bayley lost in less than five minutes. 
and then the fucking this is your life god. They know that that's not going to be replaced or forgotten about going into SummerSlam. That is going to have long-lasting damage, long-lasting effects on Bailey. Now, do I think this is legit? Yes, I think it's legit. But the other part of me thinks that this is WWE's way of possibly building sympathy up for Bailey, and they're highlighting everything. Oh my God, poor Bailey is hurt. She'll never be able to beat Sasha Banks, and that'll be WWE's way for them to make people forget about what was done previously to Bailey. That all they'll think about now is the injury and Bailey's hurt. Can she beat Alexa? Can she win the women's title? And then when she does it with this injury. People will go crazy over Bailey winning because she's the underdog and she comes back from, you know, some insurmountable odds against the Raw Women's Champion. Uh, trust me, I'm thinking about all that. Could be a fucking ploy to build sympathy for Bailey's character because they don't know anything else to do. But I'm going with the fact that this is legit. I'm going with the fact that WWE is probably going to do Nia Jax versus Sasha Banks and that Sasha Banks is going to be given the title shot, which she should have been given the title shot all along. Because they built up Sasha Banks, they had her, they had her pretty much screwed out of a, uh, out of a match at Great Balls of Fire. Sasha Banks uh, was screwed because Alexa Bliss took the championship and got intentionally counted out. And then there was a big brawl on the announce table or on the stage of Great Balls of Fire, right? Sasha Banks pinned uh, Alexa Bliss previous week to that in a tag team match with Nia Jax as she teamed with Bailey, right? Sasha Banks had that great uh, ending to that gauntlet match with Nia Jax. Why does Sasha Banks have to fight for anything? Why does she have to fight for anything? Is my question. She should automatically have been given the title shot. Now she's got to fight her way back into title shot contention? What the fuck has Nia Jax done? Nia Jax has been much better. She's been presented in a much better light. But that doesn't mean Nia Jax should be given a title shot. It should be Sasha Banks all along. Just based on what happened at Great Balls of Fire. You know? Alexa Bliss took the cheap way out. She took the cowardly way out. It's not a champion's mentality there. Sasha Banks should be given the championship match. So that's what I'm thinking they're going to do. And that's the, that's the match that should have been all along. Because to me, a match with Sasha and Alexa is much more intriguing than a match with Alexa and Bayley. Give me a break. So just based on that fact alone, if we get the original match that we were supposed to get, it's going to enhance... Raw's side of things for SummerSlam at least a little bit. Sasha versus Alexa is going to be the match for SummerSlam if Bailey is indeed hurt. But don't count out that this could be WWE's way of building some sympathy for Bailey going into SummerSlam, building odds against her, and then have her eventually overcome those odds in winning the championship from Alexa Bliss at SummerSlam. Don't put that off to the side yet. Keep that in the back of your mind because that's still very much a possibility. Speaking of... Speaking of, uh, I have news report here that just came in. Holy shit. Uh, reportedly, WWE Superstar and NXT released. Ho-Ho Loon has been released by the WWE. Ho-Ho Loon made his debut at the Cruiserweight Classic for the WWE. He defeated Arya Davari in the first round. He was defeated by Noam Dar in the second round. He has been making appearances on NXT television over the past several months. His last appearance was on June 28th in a losing effort to the Velveteen Dream. Wrestling Inc. is reporting that Ho-Ho Loon has been released by WWE. We wished him the best in his future endeavors, Ho-Ho Loon. Pretty much just more budget cuts by WWE. WWE's been budget cutting here and there by, you know, taking away uh, Pyro and by canceling shows on the network. Obviously, the talent is not going to be... Um, you know, absent from these budget cuts, clearly talent is going to be cut as well. WWE has a plethora of talent. Ho-Ho Loon really wasn't anything special to the WWE roster. He wasn't doing any, on anything on NXT. So, uh, according to them, he was expendable. I didn't really give a shit about Ho-Ho Loon. He had a nice little stay in the, in the WWE. He had a nice little run in NXT, just being an enhancement talent for guys coming in. He had a nice little run in the Cruiserweight Classic, and, and that was it. He served his purpose, he did his duties, and now he can go back to Japan and wrestle in Japan. You know? Nobody's safe from budget cuts, man. If they don't need you, they don't need you. You did what you had to do. You came in, you, you gave them what they needed, and then goodbye. You know? Nobody's going to be crying that Ho-Ho Loon has been released from WWE. Simply a business move on WWE's behalf. Um, we're going to talk about this, man, before we get out of here. Um, actually, actually, I'm going to save this for NXT because I do NXT review every, uh, 
every Wednesday, and I'll save the NXT news for Wednesdays instead of doing it here on Off the Script. Um, what else do we have? We'll talk about this to get out of here. Uh, WWE news on the Great Khali status. <laughs> Great Khali, he loves wood. Great Khali returned to the WWE in a Punjabi prison match. Please don't remind me. I get fucking AIDS every time I hear it. At Battleground, Kali helped Jinder Mahal. Failure. Retain his WWE Championship against Randy Orton in one of the worst main events of the year. This looked, this looked at first like we would be seeing Kali join Jinder's stable on SmackDown Live. Thank God. It also looked like he could be facing Randy Orton at SummerSlam based on the finish of Battleground. Thank God. So they got Randy Orton doing something even more fucking pointless in a match with Rusev. But I'd much rather see Rusev and Randy Orton than fucking Randy Orton and, and Great Khali. WWE moved Khali to the current superstars page of WWE.com after the event, adding to speculation. Two weeks of SmackDown Live have went by and the Great Khali has been nowhere. Thank God. WWE has moved Khali back to the alumni section of WWE.com, meaning that his appearance was a one-off. So Khali is now removed from the roster page and moved to the alumni section, as he is featured next to the bunny. Yes, he's featured next to the bunny on WWE's alumni page. The bunny. Adam Rose's bunny is an alum of WWE. New Japan looking better every single fucking week. Kali is also not being advertised for any future WWE live events. It appears as if WWE really only used him to get out of the Orton versus Jinder feud. Goodbye. Don't ever come back. Sayonara. How do you say goodbye in uh, in Punjab? I don't know. Whatever it is, goodbye. Great colleague. That is off the script. Thank you guys so very much. Thank you for everything that you guys do. If you guys want to support the show, please do so. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script. 30 days free of Audible service. Gives you guys access to the entire site free for 30 days. They're even going to include one free audiobook of your choice. I highly recommend the Justin Roberts book where he goes over all the political bullshit in WWE. There's one section there where he talks about a suggestion box backstage in gorilla position for WWE during his time there. And the suggestion box is, in fact, a paper shredder. And it says suggestion box, the paper shredder underneath, meaning that all your ideas and all your suggestions should just go right into the paper shredder because they don't give a flying fuck what you have to think or say about anything. So if that doesn't tell you what the mentality is backstage at WWE as far as creative goes, I don't know I don't know what to fucking tell you. If you want to hear all about that and his run-ins with Triple H and Vince McMahon and <laughs> uh would you? It's all there. His run-ins with Kevin Dunn, who Kevin Dunn was his immediate boss. That's audibletrial.com slash off the script. Make sure you guys check that out. Fantastic way. To support the show, the, to support the show, every time you guys sign up, it's a little kickback to the podcast. So all new listeners get thirty days free and one free audio book. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script. And if you guys want to support the podcast on a monthly basis, Patreon.com slash JD from NY two o six. If you guys want early access to off the script, all you gotta do is pledge a dollar a month. Early access to off the script. Access to my Discord chat available for all $1 patrons. If you guys want to bump that up to $3 or more, you guys get off the script retro. And if you guys want to bump up, bump that up to $5, you guys are going to get beer goons. I'm, I'm going to be doing beer goons on my own, man, because I haven't heard from Joe Cronin uh, in, uh, in a couple of weeks. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Maybe he hates me. I don't know. Whatever it is, I'll be doing beer goons on my own, man. We'll talk about gaming. We'll talk about music. We'll talk about fucking wrestling. We'll talk about uh, beer. It'll be good, man. It'll be good. Um, but if you guys want to support, man, you guys get the $5 uh, tier for Beer Goons, Off the Script Retro, you guys get everything. So if you guys are pledging the most, you're going to get everything. $5 for Beer Goons, $3 for Off the Script Retro, $1 if you just want to simply support the show and get Off the Script early access each and every weekend, man. That's patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Thank you to all the new pledgers. We're going to have sub stories on Sunday and Patreon shout outs on Sunday as well. Thank you for everything. Follow me on Twitter, at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that bell for all notifications. And if you guys are on iTunes, give me a five-star rating and leave me a comment on there, man. I love reading all the positive comments on iTunes for Off the Script. I'll be back on Saturday with more news and rumors. Major news on Shinsuke Nakamura and Jinder Mahal plans for the WWE Championship. What's WWE doing with John Cena at SummerSlam? News on Road Dogg saying the fans don't know what a five-star match is. Plus, news on the broken gimmick. 
Will Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy be awoken in WWE? All that plus so much more this weekend on Off The Script. I am JD. Have a great Friday. And I'll see you guys on Saturday morning with part two of Off The Script. I'll talk to you later.